Well, I ain't got no timer on this, and this this crease is really <laughs> she's really trying me. So yeah, hello. So it's been it's been a long time, and I had every intention of coming back much quicker than this, and then it just like the world was like, <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is more of a life update and a channel update and a what's been going on update with me and where I've been on not just here but kind of social media in general what's been going on so first off my hair is from Nadula hair girl the review for this should be up if you watching this then that's most likely already up um so where have I been so I had to last year I think my last video I did was like on New Year's I think I uploaded a video that was like done around Christmas time that I had did and I was in the closet which is still here and um it's a mess but it's, it's still here and I was like you know I have all these new things that I want to start for fresh you know like for the new year and for about the last two and a half years I want to say I've been dealing with like hardcore depression and I didn't know what it was and you know it all kind of came to a head because I didn't realize that I had been on this channel for the past five years nonstop. meaning I did videos weekly you know whether it was a review a closet talk I'm always active on Instagram I'm, I was posting consistently and I had always promised myself that when I get to a certain point in my life and, and things start to work out, which they did, and I'm getting opportunities that I would never slow down and I would, t I would literally cherish every single moment for what it was. And what I didn't realize what was happening is I was working myself into a depression, meaning I was not taking time out to go places. I wasn't allowing myself to just really breathe. I'm a very outdoorsy person. I like to go and hike. I like to go and if you guys, any of you guys follow me on Snapchat, I don't really post on my Insta story like that. Not a now, but usually when I'm out, I'll post from Snapchat because they have really good filters. It tells you where I am, what time it is, all that good stuff. So, um, all this stuff just really stopped. And I started to realize that I was no longer happy here and when I say here I mean the internet not in life my life wasn't to that point but it was I'm working so hard and I have been working so hard for so long that I'm no longer happy in what I created none of it was nothing that anybody could do that would change the way I felt and I was like, I don't know what's happening. Like, I don't know why I feel like this. I don't understand, like, you know, and I always have been a person, like, you need to be appreciative of everything and everybody because everybody doesn't get this opportunity. You know, you've grown a platform. You've been able to be on the internet for such a long time. I just made 34 and I started doing YouTube when I was 19. So I've been on this platform on different channels, but on different platforms for over a decade at this point. And I started to kind of reflect on... What do you want to do? You know, not not how do you want to look, not what do you think is funny, not what this person is doing, not this, that, and the other, but what do you want to do? Bijan, like what what makes you happy? When I take all this off and I and there is no closet and there are no shoes and there's no car, there's no nothing, like what's gonna make you happy? And that was for me personally, it was just scary. Like, I'm gonna be honest, it was scary. I didn't know what the answer to that was, but I didn't have it. So for me, it was like, you have all this work you have to do, but to pick up a camera right now, you want to jump off a bridge. And I'm like, bitch, what is going on? Like, why do I feel like this? So I'm looking things up, and the more and more I look these things up, and mind you, this has been going on for the past two and a half years, but not until the new year hit did it hit me to a point where I was like, I was like crippled. You know, so it was a lot of crying. It was a lot of being unhappy. It was a lot of reflecting. It was a lot of that. And, you know, social media isn't necessarily the place to show that unhappy side of yourself. You know, not because it's not real or you may feel embarrassed, but because unfortunately when there are situations that happens with people, content creators, whatever, your enemies are waiting in the wings to use this against you. And I, to me, that had always been a thing like, you know, you're not gonna catch me on social media doing this. You're not gonna, because it was like, I'm just not gonna give people a reason. But when that happened to me and I'm in the bed and nothing matters, 
not a Louis Vuitton, not nothing. I didn't care. Like, I didn't care. If all this burnt up today, I'd probably be like, oh, well, girl. This is, you know, it is what it is. Like, nothing mattered. And I had never been in my life, that had never been a thing, but I'd never been in this position. And I remember for the longest time, I used to be like, how can people be so ungrateful to get in a position in life and not appreciate it? Like, everybody isn't blessed with this opportunity. I have come up in an era where this is a job. To, to look at you guys and have a conversation with y'all is a job. And I do it from home. And everything in here I paid for and I've worked for and nobody I clock out when I when I choose to type of thing and you know I know you guys have noticed in probably the last year or two a lot I mean my hair is hitting the doula grow but in the last year or so commentary channels have skyrocketed because it's such a very easy thing to get into you need a ring light you need an, a, a voice and you're in there and I'm happy for everybody who's doing it, girl, because fuck it up, you know? But for me, I started as a commentary channel who turned into a beauty channel. And now, as a beauty channel, I want to be a commentary channel again. And not necessarily meaning, like, I don't love what I've created, you know? Because I've grown as a person. I've learned a lot as, a, as an individual in general. Not even just what I've learned in just in hair or whatever, but I've learned a lot as an individual as it relates to you, as it relates to me, as it relates to the world. I've learned a whole lot of stuff, but I don't think a lot of people take enough of a, of a understanding to understand that all this stuff is very unnatural. It's not normal to be in front of a camera every single day. It's not normal to micromanage your day over an Instagram photo. It's not normal to stress about how many likes you got on something. You know, oftentimes, and I appreciate it, you're an OG of YouTube, we love you, we this, that, and the other, but we don't get the respect that we deserve. I don't have a $3 million house to live in after all the work I've done, but I'm not, you know, a relatable little white girl who is, is, is safe, you know? So I have to work 10 times harder. And sometimes, we work ourselves so hard that we end up in the place where I'm currently am. And I'm getting myself up out of it because I'm here right now with my SWV wig on. You know, having this real honest and open conversation with you at 7 o'clock in the morning. And for me, this is a lot from where I was just a month ago. I, social media has not, it's not fun anymore to me. It's not. I don't want to tell you what my earrings is from today. I don't want to tell you what is this. I don't want to tell you what that. But I don't have a choice because if I don't do this and everything I work for is just going to fall to the wayside and I ain't going to have shit. And I'm not sitting or next to the couch anymore. My granny don't live there no more. My grandparents don't live there no more. I don't even have the couch anymore. So it's about not deserting everything that I feel because closet talks are still here. They're just going to be regulated to celebrity stuff only. And I have something that I think is going to help me that's more personal. And it's still going to be very much what I choose to put out. But I think it's necessary for me to, to really express. Because the, the more I talk about it, the better I feel. And for the longest time, I've always been the person people leans on. You know, the strong friend. And last year, I had to cut a lot of people off because they didn't, they didn't, help me they're, they're not and not to say that I ask for any help but it's sad when you have to ask somebody that you call a friend for help or they only want to talk to you when it's their situation going on and and it's a lot of it is my fault too and this is me owning things that I've done I've allowed people to feel comfortable to come to me when their shit is going awry because I just want to fix it to make them feel better and as a friend you know, I was always taught that's what you're supposed to do. When people lean on you, then try your best because I never want to see nobody in distress. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not a person who wants to see people in really bad, fucked up situations. So for a lot of my life, I've had friends that have leaned on me really hard and I've always just tried my best to be there. But in order for me to change my thinking, in order for me to change to be a better person, in order for me to just be happier, I can't have certain people in my life. It just doesn't work that way because they take more away from me than they put forth and that's not okay. You know, I can't always be everybody's end-all, be-all. Because then what am I left with? What am I going to do? Who's going to fix me a burger? You know, like that type of thing. And it's not to say that it's all their fault because I did also not create the boundary because I just want people to be happy. And if I really love you and I care about you, I'm going to, I've tried my best to be a better me. But it's not working. So we, 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 we're...
process of elimination. So that doesn't work because now I have people that are looking like I switched up. Like, well, why are you mad at me? Or why do you feel like that? Or I didn't know you feel like that. Now I can do this. And it's like, I don't want you to do that. I just don't want you around me. Like, I just call me a bitch, but sorry, bitch. And it's not to say with any malice or I'm upset with anybody because I'm not upset with nobody. I'm not even upset with myself. I just have for the longest time always leaned on myself and I've always tried to grab myself and pick myself up out of a bad situation no matter how bad it's been but now that I've gotten to this point where a lot of the stuff in my life are good but my mental is suffering and I I'm no good if my mental's not good that just doesn't work it's like if your brain your brain dead you're not your heart could be great but you're not gonna be able to do anything and for me that's what these last what five six months have been me trying to figure out what makes not Malibu happy, but Bijan, like, what makes me happy? Like, what what do I like to do in the morning? What are those things? And because we're in, and I'm not going to get too much of this in this video because I have a separate one coming out about this, but social media is such a, a it's a very fucked up weird thing because it's like we, we work so hard to, to, to get to a place. And even when, with, with me having the number that's below me, those people are still not notified about what I'm doing, even though they chose to be here. They chose to click a button and say here. It's still, or we're not going to do that. So you're still in this hamster wheel of always trying to make sure that you're at this point. And the thing is, the algorithm is killing the creativity on all social platforms. Nobody's doing anything new. And when they do do something new, it's because they seen someone else do it. So back in the day when we were just doing things just for the fuck of it, it was fun. But now it's, if you don't do this, then this is not going to work and the algorithm's not going to reward you and then you're going to do this and then it's going to, your numbers are going to look like this. Why am I worried about numbers when the point is to be creative? Why am I looking at my analytics when the point of here is for me to be creative? That shouldn't even be my business because my point is to be the influencer. You want me to be the influencer? You want me to be the manager? You want me to be the light guy? The, it's, it's a lot. It's just a lot, okay? And for some people, it's easier because some of them have just started and it's fun to them because it was fun to me. But I just want to say this because I don't see enough people having this conversation. You have to make sure that you understand what you're getting yourself into because you can get to a place a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, and you're looking at your life and you created everything on your checklist was checked and you hate it. And that's what hit me. It wasn't nothing I could buy myself to make myself happy. It wasn't nothing that I could do. There was no the only thing I could do was watch things that would take me out of where I was mentally. So watching shows, uh, reflecting, like I watched fucking Pete and Pete and I heard the theme song and I just cried because it reminded me of a, such a simpler time as a kid where all I did was exist. And I was happy and it wasn't all these extra things and I don't see enough people having this discussion. So when your favorite YouTubers, Instagrammers, whatever you want to call them, start to distance themselves from said platforms that they've created, chances are they're having, you know, create a burnout. It's, I, YouTube, just in, social media doesn't reward breaks. It didn't used to be this way. I used to take breaks, girl, whatever, and I'll come back, and then everybody who was here before will be here now. That doesn't work anymore. You have to stay in this damn algorithm, which, in my opinion, is going to kill most platforms eventually because now you want a computer to do what you should be doing because you're still taking money from these people. So it's like, wow, YouTube, you want to charge us all this and, and take this money out of our checks, but you're still not doing... I just Fuck promoting me. Can you send the 600,000 people who asked to be here a fucking notification? That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking you to put me on the front page. I'm not asking you to do nothing extra. I'm asking you to do the bare fucking minimum that I worked for. So those are the things that become extremely frustrating. But I have a bigger video about that. About just creators and being a creator for as long as I have. And we're going to deep dive into that because I think it's important. And these are the videos that I want to start doing on a regular basis. These are the videos that you guys got to know me for. These are the things that people want to hear. Not to say that closet talk won't be a thing because it will be a thing. Or hair reviews won't be a thing, you know, in, in, in tutorials. Because all you guys come in for different things. But unfortunately, like I said, I don't get the the the... the as, as long as I've been doing this, I don't get to just 
sit here and exist and then I say, hi, sisters, and I do, and I do, no shade to James, because, bitch, if it was me, I would have did it too, you know what I'm saying, if I had that opportunity, but I, unfortunately, as a black creator, as a gay creator, I'm double, they, I'm, I'm, I'm two of the things that YouTube is just trying to push away, unless you're white. Or unless you're something else. So for me, I don't have the luxury to sit in a multi-million dollar home and just talk to myself or go out with my friends and I have to worry about it. If I don't work, I don't eat. And if I don't eat, there's a problem. You get what I'm saying? So you get stuck doing things or in this cycle of doing the same thing over and over and over again. There's not a hairstyle on this earth I've never done. Not one on this channel. So the fact that I've done this many reviews... This is two years past where it should be, but because this is what works, I'm gonna stick to it because I don't have any other options as of now because, again, change is not promoted. So we're stuck in a wheel and it's, it sucks. It's not fun. So that's what's been going on with me. But the I will say this break was needed because I had worked myself a lot and I wasn't really grateful for a lot that I had earned and worked for. I had it, but I didn't really understand it. And when I say that, like, you're literally paying rent for a place that has a pool and you never go to the pool. You're paying for a gym, you never go there. There's a fucking deck upstairs that's beautiful, you never go. So now it's like, you need to to, to put the put the Louis down and, and, and put your jeans back on, put your sweats back on and then do that. Because, and then you find that balance. I have to find the balance in my life again because for so long, it's been like this. And it's been work over this, you know? So, it's just growing up. You know, I think people think, you've changed. I should. Because I was 19 when I got here and I'm 34 now. And I don't want to be 40 doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know? So, if this helps anybody, whether you're in your 20s, whatever. Just be grateful for what you have, but also look at what you want. Now, you know, because we got a lot of... Not even what you want, what you need. We got a lot of what we want and not enough of what we need as people. What do you need? What feeds your soul? I like to be creative. And I haven't done it on this channel in a very long time. A very long time. And it's sad to me to go down. It, it starts here. And I just get the scrolling and I'm just like, girl, you boring. You know what I'm saying? Especially because I know what I can do. I know what I'm capable of. But because, again, I'm still left with this... It's as black creators, which I will get into that video, and it's not a woe is me, it's more as though let's let's have this conversation. Let's because nobody wants to have it. And and when people do have it, they have it from a place where it's like, don't worry for me anymore. No, I just I'm gonna be honest and what my experience has been as a black gay creator on YouTube for over 10 years. We can have that conversation because we will. And it's gonna get very real, and it's not a woe is me, but it's more of a here we go, a uh aha, -huh, you know? So I do want to thank everybody who's come here that's been patient with me companies that I've had hair for them for over a year and I haven't put it up I have not forgot you guys know I don't work like that but it's just been a lot and when when this isn't right there's nothing I can do you know there's nothing and I've never been here before I've had panic attacks it's just been a lot it's just it's been a lot but I'm not here to say again what was me I'm here to say that I'm here still looking good you know what I'm saying? I'm, I can still do what I can do. And we're going to we're gonna build something. Because we're going to get to that million. But it, even with me wanting to get to a million, it was for different reasons. And now it's for a whole different reasons. And I want to get there to just show what I... My, my YouTube is a, it's, it's me growing up. It's like me literally having a digital photo book of my life. And I would never change this for the world. But I have to move differently because the climate is very different. Uh, just social media is very different. I'm very different. So, thank you guys for watching this. I know this was kind of long, but the review for this wig is from Nadula Hair Girl. She came this color. She did not come with this cut, but she came this color. I'm giving very booty call vibes. Very 90s. Uh, I think Tamar hair was like this in the Braxton's, but um, yeah. Thank, again, just thank you all who has hit me up. If I haven't got back to you, it's not because I don't care. I'm unappreciative. It's just, it's a lot. But I just want to thank everybody who's prayed for me, who's been so sweet to me, nice to me, checked up on me, and just asked me how I'm doing. Because a lot of times, quite frankly, that's all I need. Fuck a like, fuck a follow, just how you doing. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will catch you guys in my next one, which most likely will be a closet talk. So, peace in the east. I think I just broke my jacket.